Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about crud and how to avoid working with it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how can I avoid working with crud as a programmer? And the short answer is you can, depending on how you look at it, probably not do that. Or if we want to go with one very specific definition, you can choose areas of programming where you don't really need to do traditional CRUD applications. So you don't have to make them. Let me explain. This was probably the most philosophical question I have ever had on this channel ever. Well, I would say, I would say just in general, like, in terms of programming. How do you avoid using uh, the CRUD operations as part of programming? So I wrote back to the subscriber and said that we need to define first and foremost what you mean by that, because if what you mean is that you don't want to work with a database, I would say that this is the traditional view. So CRUD stands for create, read, update and delete. Now these operations are in the normal sense or the common viewpoint at the very least associated with a database of some sort where we web developers we spend frankly most of our time doing something like this and almost all the work that goes through a web developer has to do with these operations in some fashion where there is a network call that comes in you either you create some records in the database, you update them, or you just read them up, and then you do some mutations, or you do some data transformations, like apply business logic, add some numbers together, whatever it might be, depending on what you're doing, and then you persist it back to the database, or something like that. Or you just return something to the client who made the call so that they can see what, you, what the output of your program is. This is what most of web is about. And this subscriber seems to have gotten to a point where this isn't so fun anymore. And I understand that. But if we go with the more philosophical perspective, then, well, anything that has to do with a computer that gets persisted in some fashion, well, it doesn't even have to be persisted, has this notion. Because creating information, well, technically anything you do creates information. And updating information might be something you can cut and deleting some information is something you can cut. But reading information, well, if you don't want to be able to read information, that's going to be a really, really boring program because then you practically have to find a way of where you can read, you can create the information to the system and then never read it again. I can't really think of any situation where you, want to, you, want to, you would want to do that except for maybe your deepest, dark, darkest secrets. But that's about it, really. But let's, for the sake of argument, just assume that this is not a philosophical, like a super philosophical question, and rather focus on the common viewpoint, which is the database. So if you want to avoid using a database, or which I believe is the question, the real question here, more fundamentally, you don't want to do web work, or you don't want to do the boring from this person's perspective at the very least, the boring take some data that comes into the network or on, on, into your uh, server, mutate the data and persist it, and then that's the whole story. If you want to get away from that, then you can have a look at fields of programming that is not web, because pretty much everything in web is going to be something like this. Well, it's not necessarily just web, but the standard CRUD applications is what the most of the industry is working with. Almost everybody who does professional grade web development or software development has some type of interaction with persistence and so forth. So an example would be AI. AI is something where, yeah, sure, you might use a database to in some fashion, but most of the work that you do may not be tied into the CRUD applications. It's much more theoretical than that. And then you have machine learning, which is, you know, sure, if you want to consider persisting a model that you train as a CRUD application, this is what I was saying. That's what's so hard about this. It's a philosophical question. What do you mean by CRUD operations? Because everything is in some fashion being persistent, usually. And then you can think of things like games programming. It's also very popular. If you want to do something that is a little bit outside of the box of comfort for all the web developers, because the vast majority of developers work in web, 
for a very good reason. There's a lot of jobs and security in that area, in that region. Not as much in games development, but it's also, you know, for many people, games development is so much more than a job. It's all, well, I wouldn't say a calling, but no, maybe I would just call it a calling. It's a passion. It's something much more for a lot of people than just a paycheck. And that's an area where you definitely get to stretch your, your um, skills as a developer without having to go into, I mean, you can't even believe I'm saying this, the boring grind for, well, at least for the subscriber, of just doing web or just doing the same things over and over. In games development, you have much, it's much more dynamic than web usually is. And apart from that, you can, of course, also look into system levels development, building specialized hardware or IoT devices, things of this nature, where there's not that much standard boilerplate. Do like, But that, that's also a little bit subjective because quite a lot of people, especially if you've ever tried to make your own emulator, like a Game Boy emulator or something like that, guys, it's depending on what excites you, it might be boring as hell to do the really low level programming as well. Because if you're gonna sit and map out quite a lot of the low level details, uh, they may or may not be exciting to you. Like a lot of it is, uh, can be considered to be a grind as well. But at the very least, it's something that will take you away from the standard boilerplate of making CRUD applications on the web. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you don't want to work with CRUD applications or you don't want to be, which is in essence the same thing, at least from my perspective, if you go with a common view, as saying that you don't want to be a web developer. There are many options out there for you that you can try out. And there are companies who are hiring people who do things that are different from web. The reason why you might find yourself in web development is because it is the, it's practically the biggest game in town. There are so many companies who are looking for web developers due to the size of the internet. But that doesn't mean that that's exclusive in any fashion. Programming and software engineering is so much bigger than web. There are so many areas. They may not all as a single piece make up the same size as of web, but that doesn't mean that you can't make a really good living from it. There are tons of positions where you don't have to do the boring normal thing um, that software develop that web developers do and you can look into more specialized work you can look into vr programming machine learning ai games development you can look into system levels development iot like you can there's i mean there's so many different areas that you could look into it all comes down to you kind of figuring out what do you want to do that's the one thing that I can't answer with this question because it doesn't, the subscriber who asked the question didn't really, it's, he was asking how to avoid something rather than, answer, than giving me the ability to answer the real question. And that is, okay, this is what you don't want to do, but have you ever thought about what it is that you want to do? Because that's a much more important question than how to avoid being something. Have a great day.